I'm gonna see if I can do a little bit of paint restoration on this 1960 Impala. I sort of thought it was a lost cause. I wasn't even gonna make this video until I found this out. This is crazy. And later on in this video, Dad and me also take a ride on a 1929 Ford Airplane, one of only 199 ever made, and one of only five that still fly today. And we also go to the duct tape drags later on, where we met a few subscribers and took a few cars out that are on the channel. But for now, back to the car paint. The driver's side of the car looked like this with these rust lines going down it, and I use a triple aught zero steel wool from Walmart to clean that off. And the other side now looks like this. You can see no lines. So it looked like this. The, the passenger side looked just like the driver's side. All these lines running down, and this side looks terrible. Now it looks so much better. Now here's the interesting part. The roof and the trunk, I'm like, well, those are lost causes. That's just rust. The paint is gone now. Like that's just the metal of the trunk. Well, I scrubbed it with this and I got that beneath this. And this is what's even cooler. I used this pad on the roof and you can see that's white. The roof of this used to be white, just like the stripe going down the side of the roof. So I'm getting, I'm kind of excited right now because I thought this was just, the paint was gone. Like this is the metal of the roof. But I'm gonna take this DA with 400 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna go over this trunk and let's see if we can bring it back because man, wouldn't that make the car look so much better? I mean, look how bad it looks right now. I just want you to get a good look at, you know, just what it looks like. It looks just like rust. Take a good look, okay? Cause it might look a lot different here in a couple minutes. So unbelievably, the trunk is shaping up to be halfway decent, but we got a lead on a set of tires for our 46 International because we need a set if we're going to take it to the duct tape drag September 30th because the tires we have on it are literally falling apart. And since I'm about done with the trunk, when I get back, I'll start on the roof. So really we were looking for any decent set of 15 inch tires, but I found on accident some white walls, which I like even better on rims. We weren't even really looking for rims, uh, but we got these for what we felt was a pretty good price. They're not a brand that I've ever heard of. Uh, usually Coker sells them, but we got the rims and hubcaps, which we're not gonna use and spacers. So we can use the tires and sell the rest. So we got these things back home and there are, these are Contio, Contio white, Paw Classic. Yeah, designed in Finland, steel belted radial tubeless 235, 75, 15. So this is the exact size tire we wanted. Uh, the white walls just make it so much cooler and we picked these up for a good price. 400 bucks is a dang good price because one Coker Classic is 300 and some dollars. Four of them is 1200 bucks for a set of tires for gangster wides. So we got all four tires, all four rims, and spacers and hubcaps. Tires are a little bit worn, but they're not dry rotted, which is the most important part out here in Arizona where the sun just murders tires. So yeah, we got some spacers with it and the spacers fit our lug pattern. So we don't even have to switch the tires from those rims onto these, which switching tires around is kind of a pain to be honest. Um, so we can just slap those rims and tires on this thing. And yeah, our rear tire blew out the last episode we had on this where we put a new door on it from one of our subscribers. We're gonna take this truck and the Impala to the duct tape drags and so, you know, we got some new tires just in time. And the thing about it is, is you say, well, why'd you spend, you know, 400 bucks on a truck like this? I mean, the tires and rims alone can go on anything, you know? I mean, the, the tires and rims were totally worth it, even if they don't finish out on this truck, it was worth the money regardless. No, they're going somewhere else. Yeah. So after that little escapade, we're back to the roof and the roof is going to be the tough job because I'm grinding on this with 400, which is a little rough and uh, it's still not wanting to give it up. 
but it's just a tedious process that takes time. I mean, you just cannot rush it because if you rush it and you grind on it after you get to the white, then you'll knock the white off and get to the metal. So once you hit the white, just move on to the next portion, you know? And there's a few spots even where I knocked the white off and I got down to the red primer underneath and in a few small spots. So uh, yeah, even I burned through it in a few places. But yeah, it's like you can't bake a cake in twice the temperature and get it in half the time kind of thing. So some things just are tedious no matter how good you are. Still not done yet, fine tuning it. I still haven't done you know, this side of the car. And I got some finer grit sandpaper to sort of get some of this off, like you know, these rusty spots without going through. I, I burned through the paint in a few areas. So there's only so much you're gonna do with it because it's all speckled. See this? This is rust I can take off, but, but this red right here under the white, that's the red primer under there. So that's, that's what they used to prime it before they put the paint on. Nothing you can do about that. So we'll do the best we can with this and um, that'll be it. And then on Thursday, which is two days from now, we're taking the Impala and the 60L Camino to an exhaust shop in town to get exhaust put on both. It, this this thing needs exhaust. I mean, they both do. I mean, the El Camino has no exhaust, just open open uh, open manifolds. So this one might as well be open manifolds. There's the exhaust is completely gone. So that'll be really nice to have on both cars. dad's got the tires and he's just gonna swap them on right here and I am working on the washer fluid sprayer if you remember in the last episode I got the two-speed wiper working I rebuilt the wiper motor basically put it on but I can't get the wiper or washer function to function so there's your wiper motor and the washer function is behind the spark plug wires so I ordered a kit which is right here so there is a rubber bellow that goes in the assembly and it pushes back and forth like this. So it sucks, pulls, sucks, pulls, sucks, pulls. So this rubber bellow plus this and these rubber valves right here, it lets fluid in one way and not the other. And it lets fluid out this way and not the other. And that's what gives you your, your you know, force out in one direction and pull in from the reservoir in one direction. So, so it cycles in from one and out the other two to go to each of your uh, nozzles. Because the distributor's only got you know, two screws holding the whole thing on there, and I'm just gonna kinda move it forward. Get it out of my way. Yeah, there we go. One loose. Second one. Third one. Dang. So this is what I took out of it and those little rubber valves are built into the back and that's what's bad. I'm almost 100% positive. Oh. And here's the rubber bellow that was in it. You can see that it's sort of cracked in there a little bit, you know, it's worn, definitely. And here's the new rubber bellow. 
and the new valve it's a two piece this one the original is a one piece so is it like for like i mean pretty much it's it'll work i, I think it'll work it's the same size and everything does it go on there the same way as the other one yeah it all goes on the same way which is kind of cool i mean this ought to make it work no doubt yeah i'd say yeah so I had to take the entire wiper motor off to get the little kit in there for the wiper washer function because I could not get that rubber bellow inside there without taking it off. It's just, it was really difficult. So I got the wiper motor back on. I got a jug of water hooked up to it. I'm hoping since uh, the jug is higher than the wiper motor, it'll kind of like, like siphoning. And we'll hit the button just right here. <laughs> there you go. Sort of doing its thing. So this one's going, and this one's having. Ah, it's going. Well, that was a saga getting that to work. It's doing its thing. It's not as good as like a brand new car's washer, you know, function, but at least it works. My favorite part about this uh, two-speed wiper. When you press the button for the washer function, it turns the wipers on automatically, which is not a new concept. You would think it is. And the button actually turns as if you turn the knob. Kind of cool. <laughs> I think it's funny how it just spritzes like that. Just a eh, 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 little bit at a time. Yeah, she's doing her thing. We'll go ahead and put everything back together and run with it. All right, so the tires are officially on the 46 International. Big old gangster wide whites. <laughs> I mean, it sets it off, that's for sure. Some people might like it, some people might not. You know, I know these trucks didn't come with wide whites like that, but I still think they, I still think they look cool. White walls on trucks of this era look good. If they get a little weathered, I know we, we cleaned them when we put them on, but if they get a little weathered and dirty from driving it, I think it will look a little more accurate to the truck. I mean, it's like, it's almost like a neon light on the truck with those looking so good. But I mean, these set of tires might be worth what the whole truck's worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, it's what I got um, buying a brand new set. I mean, they're not gonna stay on the truck maybe switch them to another car but it's what i had so that's what went on so we'll yeah see. like in the end what we might do is find a set of like normal maybe white letter or, or skinny white or you know black tires and put them on and then put the you know white walls that are you know actually worth something on on another car of higher caliber maybe in the end yeah. it's got to have a set of tires on it that'll get you somewhere i mean i can't get somewhere in the truck breakdown with, with bad tires so i mean it's got to have something what do you guys think let me know in the comments what you think about the wide whites i like them i like a set of wide whites you got to get it when the truck's in motion so you get the full effect there you go. All right, so it's Thursday morning. I'm pretty stoked. We're at Exhaust Works here on Fort Lowell in Tucson. Got the car. I don't even think I've showed you guys what the car really looks like since I finished the paint correction, I guess you could call it. But look at that. Isn't that nice? I mean, dude, it looks like a freaking car now. Two-tone. Dude, so much better. So much better. I love it. Man, she's looking righteous now. Righteous. So I'm gonna pop the mufflers out of the trunk, put it in the back seat for them. And dad's got his car, the 60 El Camino that I haven't done an update on in a little bit for you guys, but yeah, I'll just show you a little bit of what dad's done. So yeah, painted up, got some trim on it, tail lights, bumper, hubcaps, some of the spears. And he's put the glass in, that's the big thing. So he ordered new uh, door glass for it, new vent glass, new vent rubbers, new vent felt. So it's got all new glass in the sides. So it just looks brand new. It looks like a brand new car. I don't know what mufflers dad's putting on his, uh, but he bought his own mufflers and he's doing the same thing I'm doing. He's just having some mufflers that he bought put on instead of buying them from, from them. Uh, he's got his headlight covers on. So yeah, man, 
car's looking pretty dang good. And it's gonna sound good here in a few hours, but yeah, we gotta leave them here all day. And later on this afternoon, we'll come pick them up and I'm excited, but I'll, let me show you how it sounds. side just comes out right there so get you a little listen in on that keys on keys on standing side by side father and son in that cool one restored one all original shape you know what same color even do you want yours like factory or do you want to run out a different way show show, show him real quick like, basically that's, factory is how they kick down i like that i mean that's my opinion that's how they came out <sighs> yeah but i don't like that what do you want <laughs> i'm with you because uh i was thinking having them just straight out right here. So we're back at the exhaust shop to pick up dad's car because they got his done first and you can see how they ran it. This is more of a factory style where it's on the outside of the frame and it dumps right about here to the left and to the right. So they don't dump straight out the back. They kind of dump right here. And again, that's more of a, of, of a factory thing. But I'm having mine come straight out the back, like right about here. So we're picking his car up, but we're not picking mine up because, oh, is he about to start it? You about to start it? Yeah. All right, see what it sounds like. Ready? Oh man, that's way better. Oh, dude, that's good, I like that. Was it you put on here? You were they Smitties? You said or Mag Magnaflow? Not Smitties. No, I they, don't know what they are. Are they glass packs? Yeah, I don't know. What they are. Don't he know. Dad doesn't even know. Where'd you get them from? Richard gave them to me. Richard gave them to you? Okay, we got them from our. Richard. We got them from an old friend of ours, Richard. Richard's gonna watch this video. So there you go. Your mufflers are on the El Camino. Sounds good. But anyway, back to the Impala. So they had an issue with the manifolds on my car. He's already busted the manifolds off because um, the studs are so rusted that he basically just broke them all off. You can see a few of them right here. So uh, the studs where the exhaust bolts onto the manifold were so toasted that they busted. So he's got that one off and he's got the passenger side off now. He can reuse, I'm sorry, he can reuse the driver's side one. He can. He heated it up and got the studs out of the driver's side one, but the passenger side one's really bad. So, uh, this is my factory one. See, the bolts just bam, bam, snap. Well, this one didn't, but that one snapped off. And it's got a heat riser in it, which we're gonna delete, because heat risers, uh, we don't need them in the warm country. My dad always comes to the rescue, right, every time. He's got another manifold, and this one's in a lot better shape. It's got all the studs on it, so we're gonna put this, um, 
manifold on my car, ditch this one, and everything will be well with the world. So I'm not sure if they're gonna be done with my car today. They got uh, dad's car done uh, by one in the afternoon. We got, we got it here at like eight, and it's like one and it's already done. So probably won't get my car done today. Probably pick it up tomorrow, but. All right, we are back in the morning at the exhaust works here on Fort Lowell in Tucson. Pick up the car. Have not heard it yet. It's my first time seeing it. They ran them out the back. Looks like. Oh, cool. They put the big, uh, big old mounts on it. Looks good. Oh, yeah. Looks real good. There's the Flowmaster. Flow FX is on there. Let's pop the hood on this thing. So this is Dad's manifold that he handily had, and they put the uh, they put the blank um, the blank heat riser in there. So it got rid of the heat riser because they don't well, we don't really need them out here in Arizona anyway. Coming over to the other side, you can see they put the new donut in and ran it all down. Yeah. He even put a spacer on there between that, getting rid of that, uh, his quality, man. There's a, he got rid of that heat riser and put a spacer in there. Right, a blank, he said. Yeah, that's good. That's uh -huh. really good. You got dualies? Yeah, dualies. Nice. I'll have dad start it so I can listen to it from the back here. I don't know what these sound like. I've only seen what YouTube videos show, so we'll see. I think it sounds tough. I dig it. I don't know what the heck that whining is up here. You guys hear that whining? Oh. Stop, stop, stop it. Now how in the world that belt got hung up on that hose clamp, I have no idea, but we got to get it off of that. Good thing I caught that, we would have burned right through my belt. That belt almost wore a hole in my dang ho uh, radiator hose. We're going to have to tighten that generator up before we leave. I don't know how that belt got wrapped around that he heater or that hose clamp. I'll put the mic over here and see if you can listen to it. I'm standing right here and the only thing you can really hear is like the turning of the generator and the turning of the power steering pump, barely. That is just one sweet running motor, man, I'll tell you. I love this car. I like this car a lot. Also, if you'll remember in the last episode, I welded the gas tank right there and I put some sealing putty on it and I filled the tank all the way up a few minutes ago, like to the brim and I don't see anything coming out there, so I think we uh, think we got that fixed. And coming in and checking out the clock, it says it's like 10.15 right now, 10.16, it's really like 10.33. So the clock is running a little slow, but I don't see a way to adjust it on the knob here. Yeah, usually they'll have an adjustment. These mechanical clocks have like fast or slow. You can turn it to make it run faster or slower. I'll show you. So if we come over to my 56 Caddy, it has a factory clock in it. 
not only can you like change the actual time, but you see how there's a piece in the middle that doesn't move that you can put a screwdriver right in there and you can actually turn that piece in the middle right here and you can see the S and F slow fast you could actually adjust the internal of the clock to run slower or faster and the reason you would want to do that is because these are actual mechanical clocks if you look in my last episode when I repaired the clock in the 60 I took it all apart it's like all mechanical like an actual watch the temperature expands or contracts the springs and the gears in there and it changes how fast it runs sometimes you have to adjust that to account for like your ambient air temperatures I'm also going to see what I can do about putting this headliner up I got some like baling wire and I'm just going to wrap it you know poke it through the fabric and over the ribs that go over the top of the roof and then over the other one and just, I don't know, kind of try and get it up out of my head. Yeah, well there you go. Upholstery guys sew with needle and thread and mechanics sew with baling wire. Uh, it'll hold for now. You know, it's good enough. Better than replacing it. So, at least it's out of my head. That was the that was the main thing. At least it's out of my head. So at this point I have a real treat for you. This is a rare occurrence, rare occasion. They are having a 1929 Ford tri-motor plane at the Tucson International Airport that you can take rides on. This is Henry Ford's sort of pet project for civilian air travel, which really wasn't popular in the 20s and the early 30s. He kind of helped pioneer you know, the idea of civilian air travel. So we're going to take the Impala, I'm going to pick that up, we're going to go down to the Tucson International Airport, and we are going to see, I think, one of the only surviving and restored tri-motor Ford planes in existence. There's dad. Oh, where's he going? Where was he going? Is he lost? What you doing? Well, I'm getting ready to go ride a Ford plane. So in about 1925, Ford bought the Stout Metal Airplane Company. And from 1925 to 1933, he built 199 of these. I think 18 still exist and only five are airworthy. This one's been restored. She's just now shutting her engines off. Wow, so fat in, ain't that cool? Look at that, the Ford Tri-Motor. Right next to the tri-motor, you got sort of the finer side of life, the people that get to pull up <laughs> to their jets and their cars and ride up on the tarmac. When this plane was first introduced, it was regarded as a quantum leap over other airliners. It was very advanced for its time. A company called Transcontinental Air Transport began buying these for some of the first use in coast-to-coast -coast transport of people. These tri-motors were also used extensively by Pan Am Airways to transport people from Key West to Havana. But even though more advanced airliners came out, these planes flew commercially into the 60s. Classic Ford always made a reliable product. That must be the mechanical levers for, you know, the controls of the plane and the rudder and the wings and whatnot. I'm guessing, because it goes into uh, that hole there on the wing and probably. Look, you can see the plate there. Ford Stout Metal Airplane Co. Division of Ford Motor Company, Dearborn, Michigan. Wow, that is really something to see, man. That really is something to see. How cool. So obviously they didn't have jet airplanes yet. This is a radial engine, like a car with pistons, except instead of the pistons being in a line, they're in a big circle. So apparently there was no fuel gauge on these, and he is checking the fuel level with a stick, which is where we now get the term dipstick from, which is kind of interesting. I didn't even know you could do this, but he is going to be the co-pilot. You could have paid extra and sit uh, in the co-pilot seat. Here we go. Welcome to history. Thank you, sir. Well, 
this, these two say not to occupy. Oh, not to occupy? That's Check out the details, okay. though, on the, uh, on the wood. But we, you want, right there we can go up. Uh, this will be okay. Look at that. on the steering wheel. Isn't that wild seeing that in an airplane? Oh my so here you are. And there's your motor. It's right there. You can see on each seat they have a light switch. Courtesy light. That was here this morning. That's really cool. There he goes. <laughs> there it goes, man. What do you think about this? You think it's pretty cool? This is really interesting. Uh, 100 year old technology. Look, and this is, I was just looking at this when they told us the story about how whenever you could take a cross country flight, you'd have to take a train, you'd pick up this plane, it would land in the Rockies, you'd get on a train, and then you'd get on another one on the other side of the Rockies. Look at those old joysticks. Those old throttle controls or those joysticks up there, all that old technology. Look at that propeller right in front of your face. Dad noticed these gauges on top of the engine and I did read about these. The reason why they're outside and not inside is because in classic Ford fashion, it was cheaper to mount them outside than it was to run all the wiring inside the cockpit. All right, we're on our way out. <sighs> What'd you think about that flight? That was very fun. It was very, very enjoyable. Was very nice of them to put it on. Yeah. Had a good time. I, th I think they restored that. That whoever owns that, they restored that plane, mm -hmm. and then they they fly it out. There's only I think she said there's um, five left that fly, but not all of them give tours. So five fly, but they're owned by museums, and they just fly them to keep them in service. They don't fly them like for people, like what we just did. All right, guys. What's well, the next day? And I hope you guys like that little Ford airplane tour. That's pretty cool once in a lifetime thing. The duct tape drags is today and tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. It's Friday today, 
Uh, me and Dad didn't plan on going today. We're going to go tomorrow for the car show. I, there's not a whole lot I need to do to this car, but one thing I need to do is put this neutral safety switch in because the old one just crumpled in my hands. I mean, literally, the other night I shifted it and it just fell on the floor. So you can see some pieces of the plastic on the ground right there. It goes uh, right here. I've been having to hot wire the car because it just totally busted. And I'm going to take these out. I think there's a couple screws back here put this one in plug it in and we should be good to go and another thing that I'm kind of hoping comes in the mail today I've been waiting for it for a while is this the license plate door uh, there's springs right here that are supposed to flip it back up I've been having to put a rock under it to wedge it because it keeps falling down I actually got pulled over on the way to the airplane ride yesterday because of that. Well, something cool came to the P.O. box. I've been in talks with a subscriber about this. His name is Michael. He's from North Carolina. And I was able to purchase this radio from him. This is a factory original radio that he has restored because you guys know how mine plays, but it plays really dim. And I don't know how to restore radios, transistors, tubes. I don't know how to do that. So he's been restoring tube radios for many, many years. Of and he restored this one, and so I was able to buy it from him, and it just came in. Um, so I'm super excited about this. So apparently these radios are hybrid, transistor, and tube type radios. So let's get this sucker in, and maybe we can cruise around and listen to some tunes, finally. Antenna's plugged in, speaker's plugged in, power's plugged in, key on. All right, let's try it. Here goes nothing. Got to give it a second to warm up, I guess. I uh, still don't hear anything. Something, something isn't right. So I've been doing a little bit of testing, and listen. Radio works great. Nice and loud. Works really good. My headlight switch, right? The headlight switch turns the radio on and off. That shouldn't be how it is. When I turn off my taillights, the radio goes off. What I think he did, this is just maybe by accident, there's two wires that feed the radio. One is for the little light in the radio, for like when you turn your tail lights on and stuff at night, the light comes on. And then there's a constant power wire that the radio always has power and then the radio turns on when you turn the knob on. I think he might have internally switched those around. Okay, so what I did instead of cutting the original pigtail and putting, you know, connectors on these, I just made up a couple of wires with some uh, connectors and spades and I just reversed where the power went. And now when I do the headlights, the light comes on. I had to reverse the where the power was going, but it's good now. So if you guys will remember in previous videos, the saga on this piece of trim that I was missing, but I found in the trunk in New Jersey and I it made it all the way back here, but it fell out of the rust hole in my trunk in my neighborhood and got ran over about a thousand times. And I was very upset about it. Well, a subscriber named Norbert was so nice enough to send me one. He said, I scroll the aisles of this junkyard, I pull stuff off and sell it on eBay, and uh, I found this piece of trim. It's not something I would normally pull off, so I'll just go ahead and send it to you. So, Norbert, thank you for sending me this piece of trim. It's going to go right on the car, and it'll be there when I go to the duct tape drags. So the car will be 100% trim complete. Very happy about that. Well, just in time again, this just came in the mail, my license plate door. So what happens is, is no more rock, it falls down, nothing. Uh, this one's bolted, but the original one is riveted or however they did it. So we're gonna have to, wait a minute. Let me just check and see if there's nuts on the other side. Oh, 
It's nutted. Hooray! I was about to go to town on that thing. Easy. Easiest thing I've done to this car since I bought it. There. Put the plate on and we're good to go. What a meat and half. I think I was probably one of your first five, uh, six hundred guys. I don't know. Really? That early on? Really, yeah. Wow. Like this guy's in uh, Arizona. We gotta we gotta turn this around. We gotta talk to him. Thank you very you much. You wanna Thank have you. a Thank you. Where's Gabe at? Thanks, Gabe. And your name? I Keith. I'm sorry. Keith. Keith Rundle. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> Keith came from Tampa, Florida to yeah. see oh just us. specifically to see. Well, thank you. Because yeah. you said on your video, if you want to come to Duct Tape Drags, come on down. If you're interested. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I got vacation time. Let's Do go. It. Do wow. It. Yeah. Dude, that means a lot, man. Yeah, that and is I so was cool. here yesterday and I, and I knew you weren't here yet, but I, I came today and so I was like, I hope he hasn't left because I got no. a late start. Well, we're going to be here all day, man. All right. Thank you. What do you think of your first drag race is? 16, so. Like it? But that's also a one second head start. This thing is wild. Me personally, I would never build something like this, but this thing has got the look. I love it. You know why? It's got the old 12 valve Cummins, man. I love it. It's got a compound turbo setup. It's got number two there and number one right there. This one is not a second gen Cummins. This one is a 91, two or three because it's got the rotary pump, the VE pump, whatever you want to call it. Looks like he's got his star wheel screwed all the way up. And if you look here, his timing is advanced. You can loosen them and you can rotate the entire pump and that changes your timing. So by the look of that slot, you can see the slot on the top. He's advanced the timing some on this. So yeah, this thing was built for power, man. I don't know what he's done to the internals of it, but with compounds, advanced timing, he's obviously messed with the pump. I don't know what he's done to the internals. Probably put a governor spring in there and some other goodies, but yeah, this thing is cool, man. We got the Ghostbusters Ambo Amp. That's funny. Oh, what the heck's inside there? What kind of goodies he's got in here? All these motherboards, that's pretty neat. All this Ghostbusters equipment in there. Funny. Got the burnout pit going off to our right. Chris from No Nonsense over here. I was gonna say what's up to him. What's good? How you doing, man? Chris. Chris Travis, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, dude. Okay, so you, yeah, you got the, the YouTube channel down here, right? Yeah, me and uh. Running two sides. Yeah. Me and Dad out here making videos. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Yeah, check out some of your road trips stuff with the power. That looked like an awesome road. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. Chris. 
Appreciate the offer on the help too, man. Yeah, man. I know we didn't take you up on it, but uh, we didn't get through attack on that anyway because we were missing the darn sunroof um, on the Mustang the '86 that we picked up. Oh, because you were missing the sunroof? Yeah. Yep. You may have seen it for sale on there. Or no? I didn't see it for sale. Yeah. I know why I didn't see it for sale because whenever I search, I'm always searching. Uh, what year was that? Eighty. Eighty-six. I searched 1980 and before. That's why uh, I didn't see it. I used to have an '86, so big fan of the Fox bodies. Driving it just. Joy brings it back to the, the one that I sold maybe, I guess, five years ago now. That I had it since I was 17. Great units. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Time to get to see him. Got the Gus man and Jen. That's awesome. Dad and me made it out to the duct tape drags with the 46 International and the 60 Impala. He done left now, but I think I've taken the 60 Impala as far as I sort of want to take it as far as fixes and condition and preservation and getting all the factory uh, options that came with going. It's on a very even keel, I feel. I want to thank all the subscribers who, you know, shouted out to me and said, hey, I got this part, I got that part, you know, the trim piece, the radio. Uh, it means a lot to me that, that people took the time to say, look, I got this, could you use it? Thank you for that. And also, being out here at the Duct Tape Drags, met a few subscribers, uh, met one subscriber from Tampa, Florida, and one from Seattle who's basically came to the Duct Tape Drags to see us, and, and that just blew my mind. It's really awesome to put a face to some of the names. And just for your guys' information, I do have a fly and drive plan for October, so make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, because I'm going to be flying up to Colorado for the next one. I'm super stoked about that, and I think you guys are going to dig it too. Dad and me appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you very soon in the next one.